talk a bit about, so once you have done the uh, post onboarding and set up your networking, the next step is obviously to get into the actual VM creation. Uh, so uh, there are two options. I'll, I'll, I'll show how you can create a VM using an image or a volume, uh, how you can have certain golden images uh, defined um, uh, for your uh, cloud platform. And uh, these could be images that are uploaded by an admin user, and then they can define certain policies, like you can have it as a public image or private for certain uh, tenants or, or shared between uh, a subset of tenants. Uh, then for block storage, I, I showed in the blueprint view earlier that we work with uh, multiple storage providers and we support different protocols like iSCSI, Fiber Channel, and NFS. So let's get into the demo for the VM creation. Uh, so here, uh, once you go into the deploy virtual machine, there are certain options that you can select. One is obviously if you want to create a VM from an image, you can do that. And this will show you all the images that are available in the system and you can pick one of them. Another is if you want to create a VM on a specific uh, storage backend using a volume, you could do that and specify what volume type you want to create that VM on. Or you could also have a pre-created volume and then just enable that here so that you can see the list of existing volumes. Um, the second is uh, you pick a flavor for that uh, based on the t-shirt sizing that you need in terms of CPU, memory, and the disk requirements. You can Are pick these a flavor. Two, two questions. One, go mm -hmm. back to your images. Are you picking those up from the image library or are those predefined Ubuntu sent us other? Uh, yeah, th so there is an image library. Uh, so we have uh, pre-uploaded certain images here, but so this is like an image catalog, so quite similar to the vSphere content library right. that you have. And you can upload new images right here from the browser or you can do it via CLI as well. All right, uh, and is it the same thing for the t-shirt sizing? Are those predefined? Yes, so for flavors as well, we have some predefined sizes, but then you can obviously go and create more custom ones. For example, if you wanna uh, isolate a, a, a VM uh, scheduling to a specific set of hosts that have a licensing or SSD requirement, you could pick that flavor as well and uh, schedule the VM accordingly. So it's taking the uh, template and uh, resizing it to the t-shirt size, right? So just because you don't see Windows OS up there, that's just because you don't have that image type. You could add that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. In fact, we have one. If you go to others, don't we have a Windows one? Uh, yeah. So actually, no, we have a virtual different. machine with Windows. Uh, but yeah, after you select the image and the t-shirt size for it, you can also associate it with multiple network interfaces. So you can have one or two. This could be a provider network or a virtual network. Uh, you can give it a name. Uh, then we spoke about affinity and anti-affinity server groups earlier, so you could pick one of those. And uh, we also have this um, example CloudNet configuration that you can use the script, uh, uh, make modifications to it, and uh, have that run on the VM boot up. Uh, and then lastly, you can also sc schedule the VM to be running with certain security groups, and it will uh, filter the VM traffic accordingly. Uh, to enable like searching across uh, VMs, you can add some key value pairs which are completely user defined and, and deploy a VM using that. Um, so here I have... Um, so what I'm not saying here is uh, policy management types of um, v VM allocations to images and hosts and stuff like that. So if I have a high performance application that I want the highest level of support to it, I would have to define it to you know, M3 large, I'd have to define it to whatever the storage that performs at that level, mm -hmm. rather than having those sorts of classes exist in the, in the environment, having it uh, automatically assign those things to that. Yeah. Uh, the the t-shirt sizes I showed earlier, you can map that to a host aggregate and then based on uh, those uh, parameters, it will schedule the VMs on that associated set of hosts. Mm. Um, I believe that's what you're referring to by creating a policy that will define how the VM is scheduled. Well, yeah, I mean, you're creating classes and, and the VM is coming in with particular requirements uh, and, and then there's a matching that goes on between those class of resources and the right. VM requirements. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's typically done by the flavors. It is not just sizes, but it can also determine the placement and corresponding policies. Yeah, so what you see here, right? Like the licensing equal to Oracle. If I, I have a flavor with this, asking for a particular flavor when you find a VM, right? 
Yeah, when you create a VM, yes. Yeah, and then it kind of matches the metadata that you may have on the host aggregate level. Yeah, no, I understand. Um, okay. So here uh, we also have uh, power operations. Um, uh, live migration is an option if you want to uh, migrate a VM from one node to another. Uh,